Quantum computing is not a new field, but its impact and potential are still largely unknown. Regardless, quantum is becoming a high priority for the federal government today. In this interview, we spoke with Dr. Ken Urquhart, Global Vice President of 5G Strategy at Zscaler, to find out more about what quantum computing is and how experts think it could change the world. If you're interested in this interview, please like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Also, if you'd like to be interviewed, please email summer at executivemosaic.com. Hello, and welcome to Executive Mosaic's video interview series. I'm Summer Mayan, and here to speak with me today is Dr. Ken Urquhart, Global Vice President of 5G Strategy at Zscaler. Ken, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Summer. Thank you very much for having me. So, Ken, quantum has been making headlines in the public and private sectors recently, but it's still somewhat shrouded in mystery. Can you explain what quantum computing is exactly? You know, that's a really good question. And I think before I answer, I'm going to, I'm going to read you something I found online that said, that you said, could, could you explain quantum computing in simple terms? And this is what I got. Quantum computing is a multidisciplinary field comprising aspects of computer science, physics, and mathematics that utilizes quantum mechanics to solve complex problems faster than on classical computers. The field of quantum computing includes hardware research and application development. It's absolutely correct and completely useless. It tells you nothing. It talks around, and this is what we have in this, in this industry. We talk around quantum computing because it is not a simple subject. I may be doing 5G strategy at Zscaler, but I sometimes moonlight as a physicist. I have three degrees in physics. And you don't even hit quantum physics, the underpinnings to let you even begin approaching this until the third year of your undergraduate degree. So the short answer is most people will not have the math or the physics to understand what's going on. When I say things like quantum entanglement, when I say things like a qubit is a trapped elementary particle with two states, and there's also not one thing that's quantum computing. There's actually uh, three of them. Four of them, if you count the fact that every classical computer is in, in effect uses quantum effects to do its business. So then we have four types of quantum computing, including one we've all been using, one that we're using right now to record this. <clears throat> and I know that's not a good answer to your question because the good answer takes a lot longer. And we've been thinking about these effects that we're harnessing quantum computers for 92 years. And we still really don't understand how some of them work. There are a number of problems we try to solve that take the, you know, a long time, take years with classical computing, the one that we do today. And quantum computing gives you the hope that you could probably solve some of those much faster. So instead of taking tens of thousands of years to solve a problem, it may only take a few days. That's kind of at a high level what you can think of. It's another way of solving certain mathematical problems and certain algorithms faster. Ken, can you talk about the state of quantum computing in the federal landscape? What's your take on how well it's understood and being harnessed in the government? Yeah, I, I think it's one of these things, like every new tool, what do you do with it? You know, I've met a lot of people who are really good physicists and mathematicians in the federal area that know what they're doing here. They understand quantum computing enough to construct the new algorithms. You know, we're going to lose all encryption and that's going to happen anytime now. And then everything's laid bare. Great. Well, truth is there's some, some encryption models we use today that may not be cracked for at least another 50 years on course and speed of how quantum computing is progressing. There's even some that are, they, they, they're not amenable to quantum computing, meaning we have encryption algorithms that are just as hard to crack in quantum computing as with classical computing. You know, I don't know if people listening, things about AES 2048 encryption, that's about 50 years to crack before we get to some point where a quantum computer could crack it. 
And just to put that in context, you know, we ask how important is data 50 years from now? What secrets or not even secrets, but what documents that might be encrypted belonging to the federal government are going to be incredibly important 50 years from now. Even the, you know, um, declassification of confidential information typically proceeds in what is it, something like 25 years. So yeah, go ahead. It'll be 50 years. Now, 50 years from now with quantum computers, we'll have better algorithms. that will keep it just as safe. Again, let's not get scared. Ken, like you said, experts and decision makers have been saying that full-scale quantum computing capabilities are not necessarily just around the corner, but a little further out. You mentioned the 50-year range. When do you think we can actually start to see quantum capabilities in action, and what will that look like? Well, you can see quantum capabilities in action today. You can, we have com quantum computers that have five bits, 50 bits. We have one computer right now that has 433 coherent qubits. And you do that by having, you know, as again, quantum effects. Uh, you do that by having a huge number of qubits and you use a lot of error correction. But we have, you know, IBM, one of the world's leaders, has a 433 qubit computer and it's trying to go to push, um, say, 1,000 and then 4,000 bits. In a lot of problems, it's still not enough. You know, universal quantum computing, they think mm, 10 to 50 years off. That's not my estimate. This is what people who are actually working in it every day and looking at what is the art of the possible. You know, a lot of people are trying a lot of things. What is a quantum computer? It's a lot of things right now, a lot of different approaches. And which one's going to be best? We don't know. And there'll likely be multiple versions of it doing things slightly differently just like there were at the dawn of classical computing. Mostly right now, you know, companies are in quantum computing are busy explaining to decision makers how good it's going to be when they finally get it. They can't give you a date when it's going to show up. And I guarantee you it's not tomorrow. It's tomorrow for low number of qubits. And that's great, but that's not enough to crack encryption. You know, I've, I've got a Fujitsu engineer, uh, just published a paper and they said to factor, uh, you know, a 2048 bit encryption key was gonna require around 10,000 coherent qubits, 2.23 trillion quantum gates and a quantum circuit depth of 1.8 trillion and it would take about 140 days. Will we get there? Yeah, probably, not today. And then you think about that. Okay, I can still crack it and it's gonna be 140 days. That is way faster than the age of the universe to crack the same algorithm with classical computing. It's still 140 days. When you know it's stolen, you can take mitigation steps. So Ken, I know once developed quantum computing can pose unprecedented challenges and threats to our cyber systems. What kinds of threats should we be expecting and preparing for today? Yeah, well, let's just talk about the elephant in the room. It's all about decryption. It's all about cracking your secrets. So let's look at where we are today. Um, we don't have enough qubits to do really interesting things with most of the algorithms. You know, to crack RSA encryption, you know, we had um, one group said about 6,000 qubits. Are we there yet? Nope. We may hit about 1,000 this year, and then we're going to go for 4,000. Still not at 6,000 qubits. The other one is quantum computing is great for breaking what are called asymmetric key algorithms. You know, those that are based on factoring large uh, um, integers, um, discrete logarithms, things like RSA and these, this, again, to those in the know, a thing called Diffie-Hellman encryption. Um, QC uh, does let you, let you crack symmetric key algorithms faster, but not about breaking them right now in a practical sense. And then you can take things like, let's just swap out the encryption that we know might be crackable in 140 days and swap in something that's not crackable. Turns out you can build encryption algorithms for quantum computing that are just as hard to break as encryption algorithms in classical computing. In fact, there was one algorithm for quantum, quantum uh, encryption 
that would be considered unbreakable on a quantum computer that turned out you could break on a classical computer pretty quickly. You know, there's always intelligent people working hard, find ways around problems. You know, things like we, we have um, uh, TLS, which is something that we use at uh, my company for uh, encryption. You know, once you break the, the if it, with quantum computing, um, you know, you can get around it by swapping out the pieces that are weak. And there's a large uh, amount of effort going on right now to find new algorithms that are not crackable in either environment. Well, Ken, thank you so much for your time today and for all the work you do at Zscaler. Thank you very much, Summer.